Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. In my continued pursuit to put a roaming throne in every creature deck, today we've arrived at Phyrexians, as suggested by my supporters on Patreon, and we've got this Abzan build, which is pretty easy to support thanks to all the mana fixing in the mana base, including the new Cavern of Souls to make our Phyrexians uncounterable. And then we already had Secluded Courtyard naming Phyrexian, and the Seed Core can also fix our colors for Phyrexian spells, and can even potentially activate to pump up one of our 1-1 one -one creatures, which can happen if we poison the opponent three times, and that can easily come up with Crawling Chorus, 1-1 one -one with Toxic 1 that will leave behind a Might token, so if this dies with a Roaming Throne out there, we can generate a second Might token. Then we also have Progenitor Exarch, which will sometimes play on turn 1, but can also be a great mana sink, letting us incubate 3x times, so that also gets doubled by Roaming Throne. And one reason we might want to play Exarch on turn 1 is if we have a turn 2 Norns Inquisitor lined up, which will incubate 2 when it enters, so it makes an incubator token with 2 plus plus one counters, and then usually it costs us 2 mana to transform into a Phyrexian creature, but now with the Exarch we could do it right away. And whenever a permanent we control transforms into a Phyrexian with Inquisitor out there, we can put a plus one plus one counter on it, and that's another triggered ability that we can double with Roaming Throne, so not only do we get to incubate two twice, we also get to transform a 2-2 two -two Phyrexian into now a 4-4 by doubling those plus one plus one counters, so that's another great synergy. And then a Grafted Butcher may not be the most synergistic with our Roaming Throne, since giving our team menace twice doesn't accomplish much, but we'll still give our team plus one plus one, and we can get it back from the graveyard. Then Vran also only triggers once, but does have a bit of synergy with kind of our sacrifice theme, so we can start draining the opponent, and the Pilgrim is much better with Roaming Throne, doubling our life gain and the life drain if our creatures die. Then at 3 mana there's Annex Sentry, can now potentially exile two things from the opponent. We've got Bloated Processor, activating the ability where we sacrifice another Phyrexian, still only gives us a single plus one plus one counter, but when it dies with the roaming thrown out, we now get to incubate X twice, where X is its power, so that can also be quite powerful. And then a Glissa Sunslayer, an excellent reason to splash a bit of green in this archetype, and again it's pretty easy thanks to all the mana fixing, and then just throw two copies of Deathcap Glade in there, which may not even be necessary, and it becomes trivial to cast it, and if this connects with the opponent, which is pretty easy with a first strike death touch, then we get to now potentially draw two cards at the cost of two life, can also blow up enchantments or remove counters. And then at 4 mana besides Roaming Throne, of course, can go wrong with Shieldred, which also benefits from a Roaming Throne, so we can now gain 4 life if we draw a card, whereas the opponent loses 4 life if they draw. And then last but certainly not least is a Glissa, Herald of Predation. So we've got both Glissas in this deck, where at the beginning of a combat on our turn, we either incubate two twice, transform all incubator tokens we control, or for instance we control gain a first strike and death touch until end of turn, making it a nightmare for the opponent to block. And then of course with the roaming thrown out there, we get to choose two abilities. So now we could incubate two four times, or we could incubate and then immediately transform those incubators if we need access to some blockers. Although do make sure to First put the transformation trigger on the stack and then the incubate 2 trigger since that one will resolve first and then we'll actually get those blockers. But uh, either way, Glissa is awesome with Roaming Throne and also just very synergistic with the other incubate cards in our deck. And then last but not least, two copies of Skrelv which can help protect some of our key creatures like Glissa, Shieldred, Roaming Throne and of course 5 mana Glissa as well. And then our mana base, besides all these uh, mana fixers for Phyrexians, also has one copy of Mirex as another mana sink that can also fix our colors for what it's worth, but this can be very synergistic with the Seed Core, which requires a few poison counters to be applied, and can also provide more sacrifice fodder for a bloated processor, can help trigger Pilgrim and Vran as well. And then we've got a few more dual lands. Restless Fortress may not be the easiest to activate since we need black and white mana, which doesn't come from our multicolor fixers for Phyrexians, but it's still pretty nice to have as a way to maybe cross the finish line against control. And then the channel lands offering a bit more utility and also getting a discount from our various legendaries. And then our two planes in case we need to search those up. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand seems pretty clunky, two lands, one of them enters tapped. Don't have any other incubates to go with the Exarch. So, yeah, I think this is a Mulligan. This is not a whole lot better, but uh can give it a try. Can try and aim big with Throne to go with the Glissa, but we'll be stuck on two lands for a while, potentially. 
So maybe keep Chorus to go with Processor and Pilgrim, and then we can still make lots of tokens with the Roaming Throne and get rid of Glissa here. Opponent on Red Aggro with turn 1 Swiss Spear, so it's going to be pretty difficult to win. Pilgrim likely gets taken out as soon as we play it. But uh, the alternative, I guess, now double crawling chorus can trump and stem the bleeding a little bit. Swiss Spear's attack. Yeah, double blocking a Swiss Spear feels bad. Can trump one of them, maybe. And then our opponent's likely enabling prowess. Alright, never mind. They've got a 3-drop that's somehow not a haste creature. Alright, opponent passes. So now... Could go Pilgrim plus Exarch, but likely gets taken out. So instead, we'll go for Processor. And then might as well attack with a Might first, in case we need to sacrifice it to keep Processor alive. And then now we can Trump and Sacrifice. Kumano, once it transforms, can uh, be problematic since it exiles our stuff. But we could always sacrifice before our creatures die. And a Twisted Fealty. Hmm. I'm not gonna sacrifice anything in response now. We'll just be chumping with Crawling Chorus. Take six. And then... I guess now go for Pilgrim and Exarch. If we don't draw land, can transform the Incubate token from Inquisitor. These can keep attacking. And now Processor can grow quite large, although never know with a Swiss Spear, can easily grow larger. So Responsible Sack Pilgrim. Could have considered sacking a Might Token first to trigger Pilgrim on the way out. So 3-4 Swiss Spear attacking. Yeah, I'll block with Processor. And then we should be safe enough to just sack a token, see what they do. They Lightning Strike, we just sack another token. All right, take our turn. So can't roaming throne, Inquisitor it is. And then the seed core is actually active here, so we can pump our might. And this can activate on our token. Might have been worth it to wait until we get roaming thrown out so we get more plus one counters from Inquisitor, but uh, we'll try it this way. And this we can activate at instant speed, so maybe they'll block it. And then I think Processor still has to hang back. Opponent's going to block with Mishra's Foundry. Okay, that's a trade I'll make any day. So now we have to watch out for Kumano. And a 
Phoenix Jig. Just gonna fly over for one. This is still a winnable race. Especially once we activate Fortress. For now, not our processor. So, attack with the current processor and probably fine to get in with the Incubator. I want to try and amp up the pressure a little bit. And then I don't think we do anything else. If I were to sack the processor here to the other one, then this grows, we get to make a pretty large incubator, which I can then immediately transform with Exarch. Is that worth it? This we can, I guess, activate at instant speed. So yeah, we can do all this at instant speed. Opponent sends in everyone. And a frenzy. Okay. So that deals 5 damage. So now, maybe just sacrifice to the other processor. This will still incubate, and then we can activate the incubator with Exarch. And then they should be pretty dead on the way back. Alright, so... Didn't even need our roaming throne after all. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a pretty slow but powerful hand. Hoping to find something we can play before turn 3. Opponent on humans. So we've got the mana for Glissa. And Thalia we don't really care about. Okay, Pilgrim was a good pickup. Just missing our roaming throne. Shana, so this must be a five color uh, Joda deck. Which, uh, yeah, Joda we cannot exile with Sentry. And there's a throne. Still don't think I can afford to wait on Sentry. Although it is an option, just not do anything. Throne on four, and then Sentry exiles two things. Feels kind of medium. I'll stick to the plan. And then Throne into Glissa. Could be quite powerful. May as well attack. Could see partners growing Thalia, yep. So don't have a good block with Sentry anymore, but it's not like Pilgrim would have made a difference. And yeah, if our opponents got uh, Joda next turn, we're pretty dead. Still liking Roaming Throne over Shieldred's, even though Shieldred's a slightly better blocker. Well, they're not slamming down Joda, so that's a good sign. Don't expect too much removal, although Airtai has one of them. Takes out Sentry. Happy to trade Pilgrim for Shanna if they give it haste and attack. Still at 13. And uh, yeah, we'll go for Glissa here. So whatever I choose first here is going to resolve last. So if we really want to have two incubators on defense, I would uh, first select the transformation and then make the tokens. 
But uh, while we could die to a Joda if we don't make two blockers, I think it's worth it to just make more incubator tokens so we don't waste a transformation until next turn. So we'll essentially end up with two more creatures. So we'll take a bit of a risk here. And then uh, next turn we can incubate and transform. But yeah, if this is Joda, I might have wanted to have a few chum blockers available. All right, Mishra instead. They can give it haste. So it could have been worse. Take nine. And then a Pilgrim into Shieldreds. First we want to transform and then incubate. Okay, so don't think we're attacking with anything yet, but next turn we can give the team Death Touch and uh, first strike with a last ability if we'd like. Shield triggers twice. And bodyguard can protect their team, so now an attack with everyone is not going to be as impactful. Our opponent hangs back, and ooh, sentry, that was a good draw. So now we can go after bodyguard and Melira as well. I guess they would sack bodyguard and then exile Melira, so probably only going after bodyguards then and uh, I guess Thalia is next although it does have ward sacrifice a permanence thanks to Mishra so it's gonna be a little bit costly here but still seems worthwhile Can get rid of some lands. If our opponent sags bodyguard, then we don't pay the ward, so they should wait. But now it's too late, so I guess it worked out. And then let's see, opponent's got four blockers now. No indestructible. So yeah, what if we give the team first rank and death touch? and attack all out. We also get to incubate two, which we get to uh, animate on defense since we still have four mana. So we'd have three blockers. And then, uh, yeah, all our attackers at the very least trade, even for partners. And then we also get to trigger the uh, Pilgrim a bunch, doubled by our Roaming Throne potentially. So yeah, that's a lot of damage coming across. Let's say they block our four largest creatures. That's at least 12 more damage going through and that doesn't even take the Pilgrim triggers into account. So I think we go for it. So we'll incubate and get first rank and death touch. Attack all out. They could trade Pilgrim for partners, I suppose, but that seems acceptable. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Close one here against five color legends. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a somewhat slow but keepable hand. If we can curve Glissa into Throne and connect, we maybe get to trigger it twice. Although I'm not counting on it. Okay, Thran Portal on green. Don't see that every day. And a Rot Priest, so Point's gonna be poisoning us to death. That's not a good sign. So, name Frexian. So, blue green IV deck, it seems. 
And they already have uh, combat research. So they get to poison us and draw a card. Well, at least Galissa is a good blocker that can also destroy their enchantment. So hopefully it can stick around. They seem to have a one mana spell. March pitching another green card to get a second Rock Priest. Yeah, that's how things can get out of hand. The fact that they pitch Tyvar stand sort of implies that they have another one in hand. So blocking with Glissa is unlikely to work. Opponent sends both. So yeah, can't really block into a Tyvar stand for two. We just end up losing Glissa, but uh, yeah, they still have it in hand, so they can go for it next turn. And another march. Yeah, we're super dead here. Get a third drop priest, and then they still have another stand in hand, presumably. So that's three more poison or slip out the back. Yeah, not much we could do here. Rot Priest can uh, be quite deadly when they draw properly. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Inquisitor into Sentry, Roaming Throne on four. And now we've got double Roaming Throne. So there's a chance we want to save Sentry until after we play Throne to exile two creatures. But this voice is already going to pressure us quite a bit. So name Phyrexian. Inquisitor can maybe trade for Veteran. Yeah, I'll take the trade. This is a second eye gancho, perhaps. Okay, fair enough. So, since it didn't add anything to the board, we can maybe afford to wait on uh, Sentry and just go with another Inquisitor and Chorus, which can chum block the Voice of the Blast if needed. Although, if we chump after playing Roaming Throne, we'll get two Might tokens. But now with double veteran, we're probably not going to get a chance to chum block. So I'll just do it now. And this can also name Phyrexian. If we had to play around a counter spell, Cavern on Golem might have been the play. And then the Might can attack since it's not blocking. Okay, opponent actually considering trading here. Okay, so this sentry is going to be pretty impactful. Opponent passes, now we can pilgrim first. Or we can take it real slow and uh, play another roaming throne first. That might be overkill. Okay, let's get an attack in. And then probably don't want to trade Inquisitor anymore. Opponent is black-white after all. And Amalia makes sense. Okay, so we can play another Roaming Throne. And then activate an Incubator. Oh yes, a 5-5. This can attack, this can attack. And uh, that's probably it for now. Although, honestly, if the Might dies, it triggers our Pilgrim a bunch. So that might be okay. So our opponent falls to 3. The Deep Cavern Band doesn't see anything, which I guess is quite fitting since it uses echolocation. And 
and then now with Deathcap Glade we have black and white to activate fortress and attack, and then can still animate an incubator. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And we could use a few more lanes here, but uh, on the draw, we'll give it a shot. Of Ryan. So, there's a bit of an incentive to play Exarg just because we have so many 3-drops already. So, sure. Even though it's not exciting without an Inquisitor on turn 2. Schooner we can still attack into. And then I'll go for Pilgrim so we can potentially trade for it. And then really hoping for a third lane. Sentry could also be an answer to the Schooner. So they won't be attacking, but they can crew it on defense. Did find a lane, but it's tapped, so I'm gonna go for Vren. And then we're gonna chill. Announcements, potentially something we can destroy with Glissa if we get to connect. So yeah, we've got a few exciting options coming up. Hopefully they line up properly. We don't have Cavern of Souls, so counter spells could also work their way into the equation. Put on just passing here. Alright, so they could just be holding Virtue of Loyalty, or they could have a counter. Either way, I think Sentry, maybe the play over Glissa. Although I guess Sentry does get a bit more exciting after we play Roaming Throne, which will be happening since we ended up drawing both of our tap lands. Alright, so in that case, Glissa, no attacks. And then it's either a removal spell or a virtue of loyalty here. Tidebinder, okay. That's fine. So no trigger prevented. Evangelists to eventually pump the team, that's acceptable. Okay, time for Roaming Throne. And then Glissa can attack. Opponent with a quadruple block, that's still not enough. First rank in Death Touch kills three creatures, and then it's just a 2-2 left against a 3-3. They had the right idea, just uh, didn't quite get there. And that's enough for a concession, I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Exarc into Inquisitor might be our starting sequence. And then Glissa is a nice curve topper. Opponent mono black with a Volt Sleeper. Okay. There's also an argument for waiting until we can play this for x equals 1, but uh, I'll just get this going as soon as possible. Sleeper can level up. Opponent's got the Infernal Grasp. All right, good to get that out of the way. So do we still want an Inquisitor now? We've got Exarch as a turn 3 play, so I'm kind of liking Pilgrim on 2, Exarch on 3, and then Inquisitor on 4. Activates Exarch, transform with an extra plus one counter, and then for now Pilgrim can maybe trade for Evolved Sleeper, or they might take it out. Second Infernal Grasp makes sense. Okay. Skrelv plus 2-drop, now also an option. But uh, playing Skrelv is going to be nice on turn 4, so we can set up a protected Glissa. And this is still pretty efficient. Sex equals 1. Bat can now have a look. Probably takes Glissa. 
Although we didn't necessarily have the mana to cast it yet. Actually goes for Skrelf, so they must have more removal in hand that they want to use. And we can keep Mirax as kind of a surprise. Play Inquisitor. And then we can pay two here to make a 4-4. And then still have Axarch on defense to make this a 3-3. There's an argument for activating now, so they can't take out Inquisitor in response to deny the plus one counter. But uh, if they're taking out Inquisitor when we've got Glissa coming up, I don't mind. Bitter Triumph at the cost of three life. Fair enough. But at least the coast is clear now for Glissa. And then we'll start by incubating. And that's enough for a concession. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a fine hand. Turn one can play Exarch. So we can transform the token from Inquisitor next turn. Could also wait until we play Roaming Throne, but Probably worth it to get the transformation going. Now playing Skralf, if we're up against, let's say, Asper Legends, they could have some removal. So then having Skralf to protect Glissa could be worth it. And then Inquisitor after Roaming Throne also gives us more tokens. So sure. Play Skralf and hit for one. Looks like a human deck instead with Melira. Actually pretty effective against poison, but uh, we're not really a poison deck at the end of the day. So we can play Glissa. And then we can use Skrull for protection or to sneak some of our creatures through. Next up, Shana, okay. So I shall be playing Roaming Throne. And then Glissa can attack. Double block is not going to work out. First strike in death touch takes out both creatures. So they were better off jumping and then using Melira perhaps. Partners is fine. And then now we've got a couple nice options, including Exarch or Inquisitor. And then we get double the Incubator. With Inquisitor, we also get more plus one counters. Can pay for one, activate Exarch for the other. And all right, that's already enough for a concession. Glissa gets to connect and draw a few cards. So opponent was pretty far behind. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is keepable, if a bit unexciting. At least we've got a good curve, and now Chorus on one seems better. So we can save Exarch until after we play Roaming Throne. Against turn one island, we would love to find our Cavern of Souls to shut down all their counter spells. Blue black, so we can expect some removal as well. Let's start by attacking. If our opponent thinks we're a poison deck, they might actually want to deal with a crawling chorus. And a march for one, perfect. So 
So now we want to Exarch for one. I'll attack. If they've got a flash creature to trade for Pilgrim, that's fine. And yeah, I'm gonna be sad if our opponent has some counter spells when we're playing for Cavern. And there's a Syncopate for X equals 2. Now if I draw a Cavern, I probably name Golem for Roaming Throne. Start by attacking. And there's an argument for Skrelv plus Sentry. Doesn't line up great against Gix's command, if that's what they have. Although I guess command also just cleans up Throne and all my other creatures. So, for opponents planning to cast a Memory Deluge, I guess I want to force the issue with the Roaming Throne. But I don't have high hopes. Another Syncopate. Now the Seed Core is almost active, with Skrelv and Armite being 1-1s, could be relevant. And a Shield Root, also quite relevant. I guess we'll scroll first, see what's up. And our opponent's gonna draw in response. Okay. So, really hoping they don't have a sweeper, because I'm committing shield right here. And yeah, Gix's command would clean up our entire board. No instant speed removal. Their last chance to take out shield roots and a march for five is a pretty good answer. Getting five in the process. A butcher can now pump the team. So let's uh, activate these first. Yeah, that's a relevant damage boost. Getting in for 11. So now for creatures die, pilgrim could close out the game. So it's going to be another march taking out Pilgrim. Opponent at 7. So we can't actually seed core to uh, deal lethal since we now have 2-2 two, two creatures left. And is there any convoluted way Sentry could come in handy? Only gets rid of opposing artifacts or creatures. So never mind, at least we found our cavern now at long last. I'll attack. And then I imagine I'll still play Sentry out. Opponent at one life, but now a sweeper could stabilize them. They don't have it, and our opponent explodes. Awesome. So yeah, we got to see our roaming throne alongside Phyrexians this time around. And uh, probably not the most broken home for a roaming throne. So can't really recommend this as a competitive choice, but definitely a lot of fun if you're into the Phyrexians. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.